Hello there and welcome back to the channel. This is Mel's Gaming here with another The Hunter Classic video. Now, please forgive me for not posting any of The Hunter Classic videos recently. I have had so much stuff going on in other games, I just haven't had time to go and sit in a tree stand on Classic and try and pull some stuff in. But this morning I did actually have some time, so I went out to White Heart and Timbergold Trails to see if I could get anything good. And boy oh boy did Classic welcome me back with open arms with quite a great harvest straight away. Now, as you'll see on the screen, that is what greeted me after only a few minutes of being in one of my tree stands on White Heart Island. That is a giant whitetail buck. I recognised straight away that he was definitely, definitely a big one with a really nice wide rack. And at that point, I didn't think his rack actually had any stickers, but afterwards you'll be able to see that he did have a couple and that did obviously affect his score a little bit. And this isn't my biggest buck by far, my biggest whitetail is a 197, but this buck is pretty, pretty nice and he did end up going to the lodge. So I'll let you guys see how that played out, but I am really glad to have gone on Classic this morning. When I first saw his antlers in the distance, I thought he might have been a non-tip, and then for this giant typical to actually appear, I was just so pleased. It's just such a cool sight seeing a whitetail with a rack like that walking into the call. So, as you can see, I managed to drop him there nicely with a shot from the bow from up in the stand, and upon picking him up, I realised he was a 187.755. Now, Whitetail Mounter is considered 180 and up, so a 187 is a pretty good buck. Like I said, he's not my biggest and he's not a leaderboard buck, but this is still a really solid Whitetail. A lot of people struggle to find Whitetail that are this big. And you can kind of see here, I was trying to get it so that you could see with the light, because of course it was early morning and you've got that bright light, but you can see there that there's just a couple of little stickers on this one antler and that will have detracted a little bit from his score probably not a whole lot but just a little bit but he's just such a quality buck So after a bit of a boring period with nothing but a couple of small bucks and a couple of coyotes coming past, the buck that was with the 187 actually came back and I did actually manage to get a shot on him as well. He was a nice, decent buck, obviously not anywhere near the same class as the 187, but a nice little buck, a couple of little stickers on his antlers as well, so a little bit of character. But it was just nice to have him come in and actually be able to take him as well, just for the extra cash.
Now, as you can see here, I have a group of bull elk walking in, and there is a big bull there off to the left-hand side of the screen, just coming out now from past that tree. And it's a decent-sized bull, which is something I haven't seen in a while for Roosevelt elk, so it was a nice one to see. I still need to get a mount of Roosevelt elk. They have been really tricky for me to get, but I'm always pleased to see that huge rack. I think they look so good in Classic. Like, I really love what they've done with the Roosevelt elk in Classic. They just, I think they look fantastic. And when you do see one like that amongst a herd, it's always just, it's just a nice surprise, really. Especially with the other three not being at all really anything impressive. I knew that that was the one that I wanted to take out of the group first. And then after the others had fleed, hopefully I could call them back in just to try and get some extra cash on the ground again. Which I did actually manage to do. But I just wanted to get the big one down first because I, they are always trickier to call back in. And you can see slowly the pile of animals underneath the stand it was uh, at this point already growing. And uh, yeah, having the, all the elk under the stand like this was pretty cool. And as you can see, a perfect double long shot there with the crossbow meant that he dropped on the spot, which is exactly what I wanted. I was trying to get him to come under the stand like he was originally, to put an arrow through his spine and then down into lung and heart, which is one of my favourite shots to drop animals, but unfortunately he didn't give that angle. Then I had this little sort of odd looking small buck come in. He had a couple of stickers and his tines were kind of bent on that, on that one antler, which was kind of weird. And I always like the ones that are a bit unusual and have a bit of character, but again, nothing really special. It was almost as if, it, like, when I got into the hunt, the best buck came out after a few minutes and that was pretty much it. But again, you can see the pile of animals growing underneath the stand, which is always something I enjoy doing, is piling up a, a good amount of animals before I get down, because it just, it's like... I don't see the point in getting down from the stand if I've got animals constantly coming in. I'd rather be up in the stand and be able to take another shot rather than be down on the ground, have a buck come in as I'm picking stuff up and miss it. And it always works for me. And I've, I've had comments before about, oh, don't leave animals on the ground. But I tend not to leave trophy animals on the ground, only like small stuff. So if, if the game was to crash or something went wrong, that it's not that much of a problem. Like you saw with the big white tail, I picked him up straight away. And that is something I do tend to do if it's something that I really, really want and would be upset if I was to lose it because of the game crashing. But you can see this guy here, he was a really nice size and I still, if he'd had those back tines, like a couple of back tines on each side, other than the ones he's got, it would have been a really solid bull because you can see he's a 316. He just needed a little bit more and he could have been potentially really nice. After being on Whiteheart for a bit and basically the spawns kind of dried up, it was nothing but like a couple of white-tailed does and nothing else really coming in that was interesting. I decided to hop over onto Timbergold Trails as I'm still looking for a 200 plus muley and one of the first things to come in was actually this decent sized male Rocky Mountain elk, which is always nice. I do get the Rocky Mountains at this stand quite often. This is my particularly favourite favorite mule deer stand though. You may have seen it in a previous video where I had a absolutely gigantic pile of bucks and also a couple of uh, elk bulls and it was pretty insane. 
but this time it was a bit of a slower spawn. I didn't get quite as much come in. And I'd already been on for a couple of hours, but I just, you know, I'd still had that one buck in the, in the morning and it was just like, yeah, I'm happy with however this hunt goes now because I've already got a trophy animal out of it. So I managed to put an arrow down in through his lungs. Again, I wanted to actually clip the spine because the spine will drop them. And I always prefer to drop an animal on the spot because obviously there you see his feed and that spooks other things. And so if there was a buck coming in, he would have spooked it. So catching the spine is, is one of my favourite shots. But you can see there it is vital organ blood. So it did go down into a lung at least, which is good rather than a body hit. But normally with that shot I can get down from into the spine, into the lung and then into the heart, which as I said is one of my favourite shots. I then had this decent sized mule deer buck actually come in, not too long after I had shot that bull elk. And I decided that at the very least I would try and take him before going to track that elk. A lot of the time if I'm sat in a stand what I'll do is just shoot as much stuff as I can, drop as much stuff as I can. And either once I feel like I've shot pretty much all the animals in the area, or I feel like there's quite a few animals that might need tracking, then I'll get down from the stand. But on this occasion, I wasn't getting as many calls from deer as I normally would. So I decided I'd take this guy and then I'd go and track that elk. But you can see there, that is the shot that I like to take. And yeah, it always works really well. In fact, when it was um, needing heart shots for the Valentine's Day competition, I actually managed to get a lot of heart shots by just taking that angle. You can see there, it didn't quite clip the heart, but did get lung as well as the spine. And actually a decent size buck but not anywhere near the class of buck I'm looking for for the trophy lodge but there you go lungs and heart blood from that Rocky Mountain elk bull so I was going to go and pick him up and then finish up this hunt this is all clips from within about an hour two hours um, of just recording and basically just recording anything that was halfway decent that came in because I thought it'd be interesting to just have that rather than have just select clips of only trophy animals that I was taking. So the fact that I even got that trophy whitetail in here was really nice. I love this rack on this elk, like the way that the tines curl sort of up and back in almost towards his head. Oh, I think that just looks so cool. That's a really nice bull. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed and there will be more The Hunter Classic videos whenever there's more events and any anything interesting that I managed to harvest. So again, apologies that it's been so long. I've just been crazy busy with other stuff in other games. Thank you so much for watching. See you again soon.